Okay. Well, again, thank you so much. Um, here we are, we're doing a HTL webinar on testing negative. So we've got three young people who are very happy to share their experiences of testing negative. Um, again, we've got um, two Canadians and one English person, which is what we had last night for testing positive. So I don't know, it just worked out that way. But <laughs> um, So uh, the English one, we've got Emily here with the hat. <laughs> and we've got Katie, younger Katie. brother Katie from Canada. And we've got Sadie as well, also from Canada. OK, um, thank you so much, girls, for, for joining me. Um, I think it would be good if we started just by introductions and your connection to Huntington's, really. Just like, just brief, not 10 minutes, just brief. Uh, who, who wants to start? Who's feeling brave? I can start if you want me to. Okay, Sadie, go for it. Um, so I'm connected through Huntington's through my mom. So she got diagnosed in her early 20s and started showing symptoms in her 20s. Um, had five kids, um, three of us have tested negative, one of them tested positive, and then one is still at risk. That was very nice. Short and sweet. Short and sweet. Uh, Katie? Yes, uh, my mom is positive. Um, I had three aunts that were also positive. Uh, my grandfather was diagnosed with Batten's. Um, that was a long time ago. <laughs> Um, I tested negative and I have a brother who hasn't been tested yet. Okay, and Emily? Uh, so my gran had it and I think her mum did maybe and her brother definitely did and now my mum's got it and has had it for about 12 years now and then yeah so I've tested negative but my little brother hasn't been tested yet as far as I know. Okay, thank you everyone. Um, so how old are you all at the moment? You're you're still not fairly young to me. How old are you all at the moment? I'm 22, turning 23 in May. 25. I'm 24. Obviously. Oh, perfect. Perfect age. 23, 24, 25. Okay. <laughs> I'm not jealous at all. <laughs> um, so, how old were you when you um, decided that you wanted to get tested? Then? I was, I started the process when I was young and a bit naive and I didn't necessarily realize what comes with testing. I tried when I was 16, obviously that didn't go very well. Um, and I fell through with it when I was 19, I do believe. Okay. Uh, I only found out when I was 23, I just turned 23. So I started the process about, yeah, about a year and a half ago. Yeah. Um, I started the process when I was 18. That's when we can do it in Ontario. So mm -hmm. I went to my family doctor and they sent me to a referral and then I went to the, the hospital in London and then took six weeks and then I found out then. Okay. Um, so Katie, you said that you tried when you were 16. Uh, what happened when you went when you were 16? I'm guessing they, they turned you down. Um, yes, um, but I was also pregnant at the time. Okay. Uh, so I could have um, followed through with it. Um, but going through with it while pregnant, you obviously realize if your baby has it, then there's a positive test for you, and it probably wouldn't have been a good idea <laughs> at the time for me personally. Yeah, it was a difficult time. Yes. Hmm. So you chose a later time to do it? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, so what made you all want to get tested then? Emma? I don't really know. So I thought about it when I, like, when I found out my mum was six, that was, how old was I? I? Just turned 13. So it's always sort of been a bit on my mind, but I was not really sure. Then obviously it got to 18 and I was like, oh yeah, I can do it. And I was like, actually, no, I can't, I can't what the consequence might be. Mm -hmm. uh, so I didn't want to for ages. And then I realised, like, actually, there's a lot of my best mates. They're like, Emily, you're living your life as if you've got it. Like, you're making decisions and you're making choices about 
you know, like partners, love, careers, as if you're, you've got a diagnosis, but you haven't. And I was like, actually, that's a really good point. I was like, I just need to know. And so that's why I want to do that. Okay. Uh, Sadie? Um, I personally always wanted to figure out if I had it or not. Um, ever since I was young and introduced into like the Heinkins. Um, so when I turned 18, I decided I wanted to do it because um, that's when I was going to start my university, figure out what I wanted to do for a living. Um, I always wanted to be a teacher, but if I had Heinkins, I would have changed my career path due to the long six years of university and then trying to find a full-time job. I don't think it would have been suitable for me to become a teacher and all that. So that's why I decided to get tested and then... I kind of didn't have it, so I went through with my original teaching plan. Okay. Katie? Um, I just, with every twitch, I crossed my mind every time I dropped something, every time. And I'd let it take so much from me already, and I just, you know what, might as well get tested. So then when I do twitch, I'll know for sure if I have a reason to worry. After you get tested, it still takes a while to realize that you don't have to worry, though. <laughs> so... With the twitches, still came that instant thing of, uh oh, and then you kind of have to reassure yourself that, no, oh, wait a minute, you got tested, you're fine. <laughs> it's funny how the mind plays with you, like, isn't it? Um, well, speaking about how you found out, then, uh, so, what was your testing experience like, and how did you react when you heard those those words that you were negative when you found that out? Who wants to start? Oh, well, that's fine. Go so on, I didn't really tell anyone at all that I was doing it. Mm -hmm. I actually I told my housemate, but that's about it. I didn't didn't talk to my family, didn't talk to anyone. Um, and so I went to all my appointments on my own. And <laughs> then the, the genetic counselor, she was lovely. She's like, Emily bring someone with you you can't keep coming on your own I was like but I'm happy like this is this is how I feel what well, this is how I feel comfortable um yeah so that was all fine so I went to what was it like four appointments five appointments something like that and then obviously she gave me the news and I was like in shock I was like what like actually I cave well I didn't cave in but I did actually bring my housemate I think to that one because <laughs> they were like literally the final one. pardon the final one the results yeah the results mm. because they were like you have to bring someone or us we're bringing someone for you I was like okay I'll bring someone <laughs> <laughs> which is totally sound like I totally think that was the right decision but um so I just sat in there and they said it and I was like what are you sure do you need to double check like do, do I need to give you some more blood like ideally not because it's not very nice but if you need more blood, like, I'll do it like are you sure and she was like yes it's okay and I was like oh and I literally just walked out and like in silence and the housemate's like, you okay? I was like, yeah. And it was just very weird afternoon. But yeah, <laughs> but yeah, I, was, I think it was in there for like 10 minutes. It was very short and sweet. They were like, you're fine. I was like, oh, mm -hmm. bye. <laughs> yeah, that was me. Okay, thank you. Uh, who wants to go next? I can go next. Okay. Uh, um, we were in a, I'm in a foster home with the two other sisters of mine and I took my foster parents with me because they've been through it all with me with the ups and the downs and they understand Huntington's, which was really great. So we went into the office and I was terrified. I was preparing myself for the worst and then they opened the envelope and they were like, nope, you're, you're all right. So I just broke down crying. I think I was crying before they even opened the envelope. I didn't really understand what they said to me. And then my parents were like, no, like, you're fine, see, you're fine. I'm like, oh, I am fine. So then I told all my family, I have a really good support system with the family around me. So we celebrated and that was good. Good. Katie? Um, Looking back, um, I, I decided to get tested at a kind of a rough, rough path to my life, I guess you could say. Um, the process was, the closer you get to my results day, it was the scarier it was, I guess. And I decided to 
try and convince myself that it was positive. So then if it was positive, like I wasn't sitting there for six months because it's three appointments and then you have your results appointment. Um, so convinced my, tried to mess to convince myself it was positive and then got the results, which were negative. Um, people say it's a whirlwind of emotions, but you don't really kind of understand until everybody always said, you're not going to jump up for happiness probably. And I cried myself too. And it was a weird afternoon. I kind of felt like I was on autopilot. It was good news though. I told my mom I was healthy and my son Chelsea it was great. It was weird. It was surreal. Interesting. Cause I, um, I, I tested positive many years ago. Um, so I don't have that. I don't have the experience of testing negative and how that, what that kind of feels like. And I know that a lot of people say it's not the big kind of celebratory thing. You know, it's good news, but it, it's it's not kind of like, you know, party time kind of stuff. But uh, it sounds like you all kind of just were kind of shocked by that, getting that uh, results. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. I think lots of it, too, is especially for those who have siblings and stuff, um, you just don't know. Right. And you that's like for me where, where i have a brother who's not going to get tested it's like only half like only one of us so far are safe so it's you win so much of the battle but you still have more to fight i suppose i guess yeah um yeah. being the second one tested from the family it was really tough as my older sister she was tested um negative and she didn't have it and then so was I and then um Parker got tested and he got tested positive and it was really tough on me because I felt like I was at ease and then now I have to worry about him and then it's just that survivor's guilt knowing that yes I am free but it's still in the family and we still have to worry about it all and how long how long did it kind of take you all afterwards like how how many months or so did it kind of take you to kind of adjust to to being positive uh, sorry to being negative versus at risk Jeez, for me it took i think the thing that took the longest for me was the twitching just to kind of change my way of thinking because for so long i just that was my life. Huntington's was my life. So it's just kind of waiting, I guess, even when I was younger and I didn't re even really understand what it meant. Um, that's your mom, right? So when you're growing up and she's moving and stuff, um, that took the longest for me, I think. It's probably the last thing. And I still find myself when I drop something sometimes. So like I'm still kind of slowly adjusting in small ways, but <laughs> about a year or so, maybe, maybe more. Yeah, it's too fair. I think I'm still process in it even though it's been like a year or so now because it's like for me because I've got a lot of like anxiety and all sorts of broken head things but it's sort of for me I sort of I'd ruled out the idea of ever having my own family because I was like I, I, I don't want that like I don't think there's anything wrong with anyone wanting that but for me I was like I can't that I can't do it and I was like actually being like oh you know maybe you could meet someone and maybe they might like you maybe you might want children and maybe blah blah and it's like literally since as long as I can remember I just ruled it out I was like that's not going to happen because I don't want to get my heart set on having three kids and then decide actually that's not what I want to do I'd rather like you guys both of you kind of said the same thing where you'd rather not get the disappointment you'd rather be set up thinking it's going to go wrong to then have the opposite so I'm still sort of like, oh, hold on, like that's that's a nice possibility in life one day. Or think like little things like, oh, like you said, with a career, sort of going actually, maybe it is worth training for five, six years, whatever. And then actually, I could be in this level one day, or I could, I could change the world. No, but you know what I mean. It's sort of these possibilities that I'd like ruled out for the last 10, 15 years. And I actually maybe. I, maybe I should start looking at them kind of thing. Well, me even, I just, I'm starting a career in sailing and you have to, in Canada, go get a uh, medical done. And I forgot about the stigma that comes along with having a sick parent and where I'm negative now, to be honest, this was the first time that I ever didn't have to think about Huntington's on the back burner. And 
he asked and I just like word vomit. I said, my mother has Huntington's, which to be honest, I probably shouldn't have said because then he proceeded to tell me that if I did have Huntington's, I could still be a sailor, but my career and yada, yada, yada. I'm like, no, but like, I'm fine. Like you kind of, so it definitely makes a difference. And I still find it sometimes I'm adjusting. <laughs> I feel like I'm always adjusting still. Like I have my results posted on my wall just for those bad days. If I am pitching, if I'm slurring my words, I have to make sure like, okay, these are my results. I'm good. There are some days I call my sisters and panic. I'm like, oh my gosh, I think I have it still. I need to go back to get my blood again. They're like, Sadie, you're fine. I'm like, but like, I'm like twitching a lot. They're like, it's okay. Like it's natural. So like, it's always like, I'm always adjusting, I find. And um, something we were discussing yesterday with, with Parker, um, who went in very different to me, because I went in thinking, OK, I'm going to be positive. And if I'm negative, then, then that's good. But if I'm positive, then I should probably prepare for that, because that's the worst one, in my opinion. Um, and, you know, uh, your brother Parker just kind of had an attitude of, uh, I, I'm going to be negative and you know, not, not really worrying about it and kind of, um, I was just wondering kind of what you girls uh, were thinking when you went into that testing, were you thinking I'm going to be negative or were you thinking probably going to be positive? Oh, I thought I was going to be positive and then I thought, how am I going to tell my family? Oh. And I, because I, because I, I didn't bring them, like I said, I didn't bring them with me, I didn't tell them I was getting tested and to be fair, it was a bit sneaky. I didn't even tell them my result until about a week after because I thought, is something I'd like to do face to face like even though it's good news but I still it doesn't I feel like I shouldn't really text it you know what I mean yeah. so um <laughs> but I think that was the biggest thing for me going in was sort of all the how am I gonna I mean I'm not gonna lie there are, I haven't even told most of my friends so <laughs> they might find out when <laughs> so watch this <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> it's, okay. yeah. it's not bad news for them no, no exactly <laughs> yeah, yeah. I also went in thinking I was positive. Um, there was like a six week time where I took my blood to getting the results. And every night I lied awake crying because I was like, oh my gosh, I'm going to be positive. Every twitch, every slur, I was like, oh no. But I was preparing myself for the worst and like changing my career path. I was adjusting to thinking I was positive before I even knew the results. So, but I went in with the support and like, I think that was really helpful for me having my support system right there i also went in thinking i was positive um not only because i just wanted to brace myself um the process is a long one and i find the days get longer the closer you get to your results appointment and then when you get your blood drawn the wait from your blood drawn until you get that date is obscene and <laughs> so I definitely prefer, I did have a solid support system, um, but no, yeah, I definitely went in thinking I was positive. Yeah, I, I think most people do, but there are those that don't. Uh, as we was talking with Parker last night, but there are there are many that don't, you know, go in thinking that they're going to be negative. Um, My uncle was convinced he was negative. <laughs> yeah, it's it just I think it's also a coping mechanism of some sort when people are going through testing. I think it's also their way of coping with it as well. Um, yeah, um, so I was just wondering, listening to you talking there, Sadie, when you said that you tested um, negative and now you kind of, you felt if you were test positive, you wouldn't go into teach. Um, I was wondering if you did test positive, what do you think you would have done then? Do you think you would have eventually gone into teaching or would you have stuck to that and, and tried to do something different? Or? Um, I always had my mindset on if I did test positive, it'd be a desk job, get somewhere that would get benefits, like, so I could get a two-year diploma, have a job right away, just because with the teaching in Ontario, it's insane to get a full-time job, um, and then with mom having her symptoms show at, like, early 20s, I knew that, like, if I was test positive, my symptoms would show roughly the same okay, age as the Hmm. That seems fair enough. 
Um, so I think also, Emily, when you were saying about not not telling your family, I, I think this is also something that a lot of people do. Um, or they really struggle with the idea of telling their family. Um, I know I did at first. Um, my first thought was not to tell my mom because I just thought I would be a burden on her. She's looking after my dad and stuff. So, uh, and eventually I did when I kind of started the process. I did tell my mom, but um, and it felt better for that. But um, it's it's difficult, isn't it? Because you don't want to. You feel like you're putting a burden. You're putting more on the family when it's already being kind of stretched. Um, so it's quite kind of interesting that people kind of think, no, I'm not. I'm going to do this on my own. I'm stubborn. <laughs> <laughs> but I know that at, the, at the time, my dad wasn't very well either. And obviously, mum being, yeah, about 10 years in at that point, I was like, no, it's not. Like, I'm not putting any more stress on them. I was like, I'll deal with the result when we get there. And in, in reality, I would have told them regardless of the result. But I was like, no, I'm not putting this six months or however stupidly long the process is on them because I was like like I said I had my housemate he was amazing mm. and sort of you know yeah. distracting you with lots of like narrow um, art and stuff but <laughs> but yeah well that's good at least you know it is important that you have someone I think at least um that you're not just going solo um so how are you girls feeling now um have you kind of adjusted to to being negative um how are you feeling? I feel good. <laughs> and like, I'm doing, so I work for the prison service mm -hmm. and in the kind of job where I, I mean, I don't know because I haven't looked into it, but I know a lot of the kind of police, prison, army, all the kind of stuff that kind of interested me oh, in yeah. with Thanks. a positive result may not have been even an option that um, even if it was like I might not be symptomatic for another 20 years in reality as soon as they see that you know those three letters saying yes you know that you've got it I was like so in that sense it's been quite like not good because suddenly I've got all these well I say all these options you know I still can't fly a plane or anything because I'm scared of flying but like you know there's, there's a lot more options that I feel are available that I didn't even consider really before because I knew I would have to have a result for it and I say even remember calling the army talking about it and them saying we can't make you but you would need a result really for us to take your application further well it turns out now I really don't want to be in the army <laughs> but at the time it was sort of that kind of thing that's what the army do at least yeah. the one in, in the UK they they ask people at risk to get tested and it's very, it's very annoying. <laughs> um, it is something that um, people have been trying to change, but you know, the army's the army, so they do what they want really. But, but yeah, it's a bit strange. Yes, yeah, so I've got all this, like in that sense, obviously it's great, but obviously, like I said, like it sounds like the other two, um, I've still got an at-risk sibling. So it's sort of, you, you have that really positive sense for yourself, but at the end of the day, I'm like, my mum's still very poorly mm. um, I don't know the outcome for my own brother let alone you know possible future nieces and nephews you know what I mean all that kind of thing yes. so it's sort of like I know everyone sort of said this but it's like you are happy but it's slightly overshadowed with the yeah but we're not we're not out of this like it's still maybe my direct bloodline is out of it but not from the you know not already existing kind of thing so so it's a weird one <laughs> it's weird Katie, what about you? How are you feeling? Um, okay. Um, I know my brother took a job where he probably won't get tested. Um, because if he did, he'd probably have, and it was positive, he'd probably lose his job. Um, I don't think he was completely honest when he went into his place of work. Because I don't think he ever wanted to get tested. So I'm never going to know. So every joy I do have... Um, you do have that thought in the back of your head. Like, I hope my brother can share in this too with me. And I just, 
but I think I've come a long way. Um, I'm happy I did it. I'm happy that I had my son when I did, um, because I had him before I got tested. And no matter what happened, no matter if it was positive or negative, I didn't want Huntington's to take that from me. I wanted to be able to be a mom and love something. And if it was positive, and I was like my mom, I she'd start. I would start showing symptoms when he was older. So I decided I to have my son early. So hopefully, if my symptoms did start in my 30s, maybe he would be older. But then I don't regret that at all. I'm happy I did that. I'm just lucky that I'm negative, and so is he. I'm happy though. Just wish I could help everyone else. <laughs> Sadie. Um. Just like Katie said, I am happy, but you also have that guilt of knowing that, especially from a family of five, like there was other siblings who were at risk and like I couldn't rejoice over my testing and then having them like still be at fear for being at risk. And then um, after Parker got tested, he was positive and that just really put a damper on me because I can't be happy that I got tested negative because I would rather be tested positive than he be tested positive. That's just who I am. I want him to make sure he has like a happy life and I know he will. And then having the other brother at risk with two kids is really hard to see because knowing that they could possibly be at risk, but knowing that Alex is fulfilling his life and wanting to just live his life is making me happy. So like, it's just, Overall, I'm happy, but overall, you have that guilt of, I don't have it, but they might have it. The thing that's hard to remember, too, I find, is that our loved ones who weren't able to walk out of those offices with a negative result um, want, don't, like, want us to, like, they don't want us to be sick either, you know what I mean? But, like, we care about them also, so, like, it's hard it's it's a hard um, thing to try and work through, I guess. It's hard to remember that the person who, like, you're worried about doesn't want you to have a positive result either. So it's weird back and forth, I guess. <laughs> said, he said, I'd rather have it than you have it. So it's just that, like you said, constant, no, I wish I had it, and then you didn't have it. So. <laughs> it's a never-ending battle. <laughs> did, it, um, did it affect... You've all got siblings, so I'm just wondering, did it affect your relationships in any way or, or has it just kind of brought you closer? Um, I think after Parker's testing, it brought us closer because knowing that he was positive, um, you never know when his symptoms are showing or when they'll start showing. So it just like it made me think, OK, like. Being so far away from home, like whenever I go home, like I go see him and like we spend time together, like we always are on the phone together, making sure like we're keeping up with each other's lives and like um, just brought us closer as like a family and as siblings and especially being in a foster home and not having him growing up has brought us closer too. And like, we actually have a sibling bond now. Um, me and my brother haven't had a relationship really for 10 years. Um, we kind of fell off even before I got tested. Um, for co reasons completely different. Um, I did send him a message to let him know I was negative, but we never, it definitely didn't bring us closer. Um, Huntington's kind of didn't do much to bring my family closer as a whole, though. <laughs> it's kind of done the opposite for me and my situation. Emily? Uh, I don't think it necessarily brought us closer. But he was really happy. And like me, me and my brother are like so close. Like we're really, really close. And so like actually no, don't worry. I'm just my thought drifted. But um <laughs> but yeah, but it was really, really nice. Like he was so happy and yeah, my family like, woohoo in the car, because I told him in the car. I don't know why. Like <laughs> like, oh yeah, I'll wait, I'll wait until you know an appropriate moment. So I decided to wait until <laughs> the car. But 
my dad. So okay, you know, that's fine. But I think he was like, yay! And I was like, Dad, hands on the wheel. No, it wasn't. <laughs> but it was but it was really nice though. And like, yeah, but I'm very I think I'm very blessed that my family, we're so tight. Like we're really tight. And like it's even to the extent that over Christmas we bought tinsel to pimp mum's wheelchair. Do you know what I mean? Like we're sort of <laughs> It was so much fun. I thought like, I'm going extra on this wheelchair right now. But yeah. It was, Cute. It was, it was, yeah. <laughs> Got a little toy like bauble as well. <laughs> well, Christmas yeah. is over now, I'm sorry to tell you. I'm gonna have to start getting ready for next year. <laughs> Walk tinsel. You can decorate for Easter. <laughs> Easter eggs are out in the shops now, so True. Easter's coming. Um, so, okay, last question. Uh, what advice do you have for other young people going through testing? My advice would have to be, um, everybody kept told me, telling me that it's a very personal decision and you only know, you'll know when you're ready. And I thought I was ready and I felt like I was ready, but even through the whole process, I kept questioning myself, am I really ready? Cause like, it's not something you can go back on, but I knew enough that I didn't stop the process. So you really do know when you're ready, um, have a good support system and don't go to the last appointment, at least by yourself. Cause I know there's lots of people that do want to go. It's hard to tell people it's hard. People don't know what to say. But try not to go to the last one by yourself, at least. That would be my advice. Thank you, Katie. Basically, I'm going to repeat what Katie said. Um, just make sure you're ready. Um, don't let anyone else rush it or tell you to go. Um, but have that su support system. If it's your family, friends, anyone, make sure you have someone you can lean on because it is heavy news. Whether it is positive or negative, it'll, it affects you. It affects your whole life. So, yeah, so good because I'm going to say the same thing, but it's sort of, I think, without like freaking yourself out too much, sort of, it is really important to properly think about it because it's like when I first thought about doing it on reflection, if I got bad news, I was not in a place that I could have coped with it. I know I wasn't. Whereas when I did get tested, I was like, actually, do you know what? you know it's obviously not good and it will take some time but I can get through it well at least I'd hope I would have obviously I don't know fortunately but it's sort of like you said really know yourself in that sense and if there's any hesitation don't do it would be my advice because actually yeah the impact of it if you don't think you can cope with it which is completely fair it you know just look after yourself basically mm. Yeah, that's good advice. I mean, I always say the same thing as well. You know, just be 100% sure that you're ready to get tested. And if you're not, don't. Um, and I think, as you say, Katie, you'll know when you're ready. So Yeah, you do. And even with the questions, like every time I said, like, are you really ready? And I think my hesitation was just me through the whole process. Kept, I kept asking myself, like, are you really ready? Because a positive was a very high possibility. So you do have to ask yourself, can I, am I okay with this? And as long as you keep saying yes, I think you'll be fine. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's it, folks. Unless you've got anything else you want to say at this point. Um, you've all been fantastic. I appreciate your time. Thank I'm you. I'm happy for your guys' Thanks. negative results. Hey. I'm happy for the neg other negative results. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm happy, I'm positive and I'm happy for you guys getting negative results. So, you know, congrats, enjoy it and, you know, have a, have a great time with your lives. Um, I hope I'll see you guys maybe in Glasgow in May. I know, Sadie, you're trying to come, aren't you? Um, so, yeah, hopefully I'll speak to Emily and, and Katie and maybe we can try and get you guys there if you're interested. Um, but I'm hoping that we'll see some of you in Glasgow anyway. Uh, but but Thank you so much, guys. I really appreciate it. I'm going to stop the recording now so you can start swearing if you want to. <laughs>